Welcome to Insight, concise comment on current issues from the Jubilee Center. Today we are talking to Professor Bob White of Cambridge University uh, and also a director of the Faraday Institute for Science and Religion. Bob, as you know, there are those who for various reasons doubt that global warming is occurring and is the result of human activity. What has persuaded you personally that global warming is in fact happening? Yes, well interestingly it's the geological record that convinced me more than anything and here we are in the Geological Society and I'm a geologist and if you look at a, a graph of the temperature change over the last um, couple of ice ages, the last couple of hundred million years, uh, you see the temperatures going up and down by about 10 degrees. Now the interesting thing is if you plot the carbon dioxide on top of that, uh, it mirrors it identically. Temperature goes up, carbon dioxide goes up and vice versa. And that's a very close correlation, very striking. But if you just look at the last 50 years, look at what happens to the carbon dioxide. It just rockets upwards. Um, so we're getting close to doubling. We're on our way to doubling carbon dioxide since pre-industrial times. And that is taking us outside realms that the Earth has ever experienced for the last um, 600,000 years at least, probably the last million years, much longer than humans have been on this Earth. Well, I work quite a lot, of course, with all companies as well because uh, of my work. And it's estimated that we're burning a million years worth of carbon accumulation in coal and oil and gas every year at the moment. So we've locked away that carbon underground, took a million years to lock it away, and then we're releasing it into the atmosphere incredibly fast now. So that's why carbon dioxide is going up so quickly in the atmosphere now, because we're burning so much. Um, the third thing is a more technical thing, that if you model the climate and you just put in the changes that are natural in the Earth, like volcanoes and El Nino and El Nino and that sort of thing, you can't reproduce the, the way temperature has increased steadily over the last 50 years. Um, but if you put in all those human gases as well, it fits really well. So it's very convincing that uh, there's temperature change and that humans are causing it. And Bob, tell me, how would you describe the state of opinion uh, in the scientific community about the reality of global warming? Oh, it's in incredibly strong. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of scientists. Of course, the voices you hear are the few that um, for whatever reason are mavericks and don't agree uh, and they have loud voices but actually it is a rock-solid consensus. Um, the IPCC which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change which gives very authoritative reports every four years in their last report for the first time ever they said that the evidence for climate change was unequivocal. Well you can't get much stronger than unequivocal from thousands of scientists all over the world from all the nations of the world essentially saying that, no doubt at all. And Bob, how would you describe the, the consequences of global warming if, in fact, we do nothing about it? Mm. Well, if we did nothing, it's estimated that temperature rise, if we just carry on the lifestyles we've got now, would it be four or five degrees over this century, um, which is a great deal. Um, if we really work hard at it, we might be able to keep the temperature change, global temperature change, down to two degrees. But the more important thing actually is that as the world gets hotter, weather events get more extreme. So we'll see more droughts and they'll last longer. And if you're a farmer in sub-Saharan Africa and the drought lasts two years, then you'll starve. Um, and floods will get stronger. Um, and it's estimated that by um, 2025, uh, not very long from now, probably half the world's population will be at risk from floods. And I think it's a little known fact that floods are really the world's biggest killers from natural disasters and hundreds of millions of people are at risk from flooding. So that, that's a very serious change and what we've done already to the climate is going to feed through into increased sea level and so on for decades and in fact centuries to come. So we've already caused a change uh, from which there's no going back. So the question now is can we prevent it getting worse? Bob, what will the impact upon the ice caps and the sea level be if things continue to warm uh, as they currently are? Uh, sea levels will just keep rising, probably by around half a metre to a metre this century, which actually doesn't sound very much, does it, if you live in, uh, in Cambridge even, which is above sea level, well above sea level. But if you live in Bangladesh, which is a delta, where tens of millions of people live within one metre of sea level, that's pretty disastrous. Um, so. Sea levels will keep rising um, by order of a few metres. Um, if it got so hot that the whole Greenland ice cap melted, that would raise sea level by about seven metres. Um, in the extreme event between ice ages, sea level can rise 100, 120 metres. We know that from geological record in the past. Um, and I suppose it, the worry is not that the Earth can do this, because we know it can do it, it's done it before. 
But the worry at the moment is that it's doing so fast that human populations can't respond because human lives, humans live on land and you know you fight wars over land, over your boundaries. So if you're displaced because of climate change, there's nowhere to go. Um, so it may well be that wars will be fought over this sort of issue um, if we don't take a lot of care about how we handle it. Bob White, thank you very much.